Oh god, you guys have no idea how tempted I was to put on like the, the PlayStation 1 start sound. So it was like, let's play Tomb Raider, and then it tricked everyone into thinking it was the wrong game. Uh, no, hello everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Tomb Raider. Uh, and we're kind of out of cutscene city now, so I can actually kind of talk a little bit more freedom. We get our first taste here of the more open world oh, God. What's going on here? aspects of the Wait. game. I can use that bow. And yes, we can, Laura. So we're actually in kind of a small area. If we press tab while we're playing Tomb Raider, we'll see. We can actually zoom out, and this is the island we've landed on. Pretty big. You'll be surprised as well. Like, when I first saw this map, I thought, oh, there's no way we're going to be able to explore all of this. You actually do explore a very large chunk of the entire island. Like, we will end up all the way over here at some point, and we'll end up all the way down here at some point. Um, I think a lot of that comes from the graphic that they use for the map, but it's actually way, it makes it look a lot larger than it actually maps out in-game, but anyway. Uh, right now, if we hover away over where we currently are, you can see this little area gets highlighted and we're in the coastal forest. Uh, coastal Bluffs was where we just were, small sort of transitory area, and here's the scavenger's den where the game began. Um, so we actually can see here, the scavenger's den is kind of just underneath us to the north, and we have a weird building here as well. Which is kind of odd. But one thing I do want to uh, draw your attention to is that of the coastal forest, you see we get all of this extra stuff here. Ghost hunter, treasure maps, downloaded tombs, GPS caches, relics, and documents. Uh, and camps as well. These are all of the additional optional things we can get in the game. And because this is 100% run, this is the stuff that I'll be aiming to get. I already have done that. I've already found them all. Um, the game actually makes it really easy to do so. Which is awesome. We might not get everything on our first run through the areas. Because I don't really see the point in sort of looking through all the bushes when we don't really have to. Because later on we'll get upgrades that really help us um, have a much smoother experience, I'll put it that way. But we will get what we can while, while we go along. So anyway, we're going to come and try and grab this bow here. I, do this. I know you can do it, Lara. Don't worry. Okay. So this is a really simple little thing. you just got to reach for it when it's close to you. So if I try and reach now... It's not going to grab it, but if we try now... Go on, Laura! Yes! And we fall down again. <laughs> I saw on Reddit just before filming this, someone had like made a joke that this was actually just Falling Simulator 2013. I think that's that's quite accurate, to be honest. So yay, we get a long bow. And you also saw me pick something up earlier. It should, it's it's only a bow. Just uh, remember Roth's training. You can have the best form and technique in the world, but it won't mean a thing if you can't focus. The key to using any weapon is focus. Indeed, yeah, so you've seen me picking up some arrows as well. So hungry. I need to find something to eat. I did for a while on my first run through start thinking, why are there so many arrows all over the damn place? It's, it's not as bad as you think. Uh, the bow isn't the only item in this game. Anyway, there's a certain type of jump you can do as well. If you find like a flat uh, wall like that, that's usually got some wood or some corrugated iron or something on it, you can kind of leap up a second time by double tapping the jump button. You can climb to higher areas you might not otherwise be able to. And here we'll find our first pickup, which is quite fitting because these are the most common of them. Hmm, some kind of container. A GPS cache. You left these behind. Which always makes me think of geocaching, which is something I do on on the odd occasion. I haven't done it for a while, but it's pretty cool. It's like this real world thing where people actually hide caches around. You should check it out. Honestly, it's pretty amazing. Anyway, so we're going to find these geocaches around on the island. Um, and they're the most numerous of pickups usually. You can see there's only five here in the coastal forest. And there's plenty of other stuff. Like, for example, Ghost Hunter, there's more. But... Um, and all the areas will be finding GPS caches, and they're, they're, they're kind of a big mystery of the game, and once you get all of them, they really kind of tie into what seems to be the bigger plot for Tomb Raider, namely it seems to be hinting at what we'll find in sequels and stuff, so really they are some of the most exciting stuff you can find, honestly, in the game, and I kind of want to keep bringing your attention back to them as we go through the plot. So right now we see that there's caches, we know there's other people on this island, we got attacked by one, he said he was trying to help us, but there are people here, um, did they lay the caches? Well, we, we don't know for sure just yet. Anyway, we did just see a deer. Um, what we're doing is hunting to survive, basically. In a lot of interviews before this game came out, the devs were like, Oh, Lara has to hunt to survive, and it's, you know, a whole new take on the gameplay. This is actually the only time you have to hunt for food. But So we'll try it. By right-clicking, we can go into manual aim, or whatever the button is, depending on what platform you play in the game. And we need to, I guess, sneak up on one of these guys so they don't run away from us. Uh, keep your eye out though because there are some other things too. Again, we can use survival instincts. We can press Q and it might highlight some important stuff for us in the area. Like, for example, those arrows that are on the floor there. Now there, you can see just over in the distance, you might not be able to see too clearly on YouTube. I am putting up in 1080 at the moment, but it might not. you might not be able to see for the whole time. Oh, 
Okay, we'll get him in a minute. But you can see this thing hanging up here. So let's shoot it. And this I missed completely in my first run through. So uh, this is kind of like a pickup as well. In all areas, you get not only pickups, but you also get challenges too. You see how we can't actually highlight this last one, Ghost Hunter. There's sometimes two challenges. Most of the time, there's only one. But there are extra things you can do in the area. So we're just knocking out these things for the first challenge uh, that are hanging from the trees. And in fact, there's one right back at the start as well, which I was going to point out in the first episode. But I, th I didn't think it was too fitting in the end. So anyway... We'll continue with that in a second. Let's try and shoot this guy. Headshots do count in this game. So, well, they do count. I don't know how he's still alive there, but um, they do count. Oh, no, don't. Don't. I actually feel really bad fighting these deer because they really look wounded as you're going along and fighting them. Oh, maybe we can kill his friend instead. There we go. Pow, straight in the kisser. So let's go over. Oh, oh, there's the other one. Ah, we'll get it in a second. It looks so weak, though. I feel bad at the start of this game. Like... Sorry. <sighs> it's about survival. <laughs> don't worry, Lara. Well, of course, we don't have a knife or anything to cut into it, so we just grab one of the arrows. And I don't like the way we go straight for the stomach here. Like, you'd expect her to maybe go for the head? Maybe? Okay, there we go. Right, back to camp. So we get a skill point. Now camps you find around the game. As you can see, there's three in the coastal forest. You find camps around the game and they allow you to do various things like uh, spending right. skill points. You won't always have some fancy gadget to tell you where you are. If you can learn to read the land and the stars, you'll always be able to find your way home. Okay, for sure. Uh, so I guess he's just telling us how we can go back to the camp. You can use camps to level up and stuff. There's also fruit and stuff in the world which you can pick up to give you experience. So that only gives us 10. Later on in the game we'll get more experience from stuff like that. Uh, and there's plenty of other things. Like I said, I'm not going to worry too much just yet though because there's plenty of time. I would like to, you know, be able to get 100% for all areas as we go through but I don't think it's really that fitting. You can, however, if you like, stick about here. Um, and just keep looting stuff, keep killing them. You only get experience on this game when you cut into the body of something. Uh, when you actually go and grab whatever resources it has to offer you. Uh, so you can't just kill things and expect by magic to get stronger at certain stuff. You have to continue uh, going over to bodies. Anyway, there's another GPS cache here. Some kind of coordinates. Yeah, coordinates. Does someone want these to be found? I guess so. Were we the person that was meant to find them? Hmm, I got really kind of confused, to be honest, with the GPS caches at the start of the game because I thought that for each area we were finding GPS caches that they would each lead to like a hidden chest or something in each area, but in fact it's like all the GPS caches in the game eventually kind of lead to some information. Uh, we've also got this turned over truck here. If we go inside it, we can find another type of pickup. Now, there are documents that you can find around the game and there's some of the most awesome thing about it. So we're going to read this journal from some guy. It... It happened again. Private Koske. He was on gate duty last night. No one heard anything. And this morning, they found his helmet. Nothing else. No tracks of his leaving. No blood. No shell casings. Nothing. The others are talking about Chinese partisans. Maybe even American GIs. Damn fools. They have no idea what's happening here. It is the Oni who stalk us. The restless, evil spirits. They live in the old places of this island. We are trespassers here. And they are watching us. Waiting. All these wrecks, the ruins, this entire island is a graveyard. It's only a matter of time. The Oni will come for us. Hmm, so we actually get some extra flavour text here on the left. You kind of get Lara's thoughts about the document. So here we can see that this comes from a soldier. Um, the subject is Oni Stalkers. And we get this bit of flavour text that says, From the diary of a soldier, he mentions Oni, demons from Japanese folklore. What could it really have been? So she doesn't believe for a second that there are real ghosts. Um, and we'll see as the game goes along what we can really expect to attack us and what really is going on here. A big theme of a lot of Tomb Raider games, not maybe the first generation, but definitely the, the second generation, was the this is just kind of a real world 
filled with real realistic things that and people are skeptical about the magical and the supernatural and stuff but lara through her journeys finds that kind of myths and legends from ancient cultures do tend to be based on a, a reality that there, there is real supernatural stuff going on that gods might really exist and you know all this kind of stuff and the new tomb raider games very much stay in that as well so for a, a long time we're going to be hearing about weird stuff going on the island and we the player can be just as skeptical as lara like we don't know how realistic it's going to be just yet. I mean, are there really going to be ghosts? Well, we'll see. Uh, I don't want to run in circles too much, but I know there are a couple more um, like of these skull things for us to shoot down, which I just want to be careful of. Now, the rewards for doing challenges aren't necessarily uh, that great in this game. You get a little bit of experience, and if you do go through the whole game making sure you get everything first time through, you'll kind of end it with plenty of experience to have maxed all the skill trees and just be very comfortable. And as I say, the game's quite easy too, so... I, I wouldn't even say that's 100% necessary. Um, definitely when they put out the sequel, I would like to see that the skill trees get improved somewhat. But hey, maybe I'm jumping ahead a little. I know that there are five totems for us to get at the very start here. And we've only got two so far. So uh, This also could be an LP where I just do like lots of cuts as we cut from one thing to the other. There's another one over there. Let's get a nice long range shot on it. Oh, another thing about the bow, which I haven't explained yet, is if we draw it back for too long, Lara's arm will get weak. And it will start to shake about. Can you see that? And then after a long enough period of time, we accidentally just we, we let go of the arrow and we're probably not going to hit anything. So that's something that, again, as we go through the game, you can start to spec into to make stronger. The bow is very fun. I spent most of my time using the bow, despite the fact there's quite a, a decent range of weapons for us to go for. Sorry, Mr. Deer. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm also getting weird particle effects coming up on my screen. That wasn't happening before. Very odd. Okay, um, I think that's about it, guys, for the for the first start. Let's go back to the camp uh, and spend our uh, spend our food. Let's cook our delicious food and sort ourselves out. So, hope everybody's having a good day. I'm also hoping this, you know, I'm doing Grimrock at the same time as playing this, and I'm hoping this can be, you know, just like that where I, I just ramble about random shit that's going on with me. One thing I also want to point out. Where am I going? Oh, it's around here. One thing I also want to point out is that. Um, like, a lot of the animations and movements and sounds that Lara makes, whenever you hear her make a little noise or something, that was all done by her actress. Like, the the person that was playing as Lara, essentially doing, like, all motion capture and stuff, did a lot more than just lending her voice. She did a lot of stuff. So, basically, I was reading an interview where, essentially, there we go, there's four and we'll get our fifth at the start, too. So, we do have all of them. She did an interview where she talked about how once she'd done all of the major lines for the game, she watched someone playing it for a few hours. Like, the whole way through the game, for, like, a couple of days, actually, I think it was. And every time La something happened that Lara might have reacted to audibly, she then made that noise in return, which is, you know, it's fascinating. So, really, there was a lot of acting that went into this, and I, I really quite like that. Anyway, let's just crawl back through here. We we were next to the camp just then, but if we crawl back, this is where the plane was that crashed down and stuff. But if you see here, this is what I wanted to point out. There's one sneakily hidden there. And I will come out and say that's probably one of the biggest dick moves the game does for challenges. Otherwise, it's usually quite easy. There's a ridiculous one later, though, where you have to, like, burn these things. And it's just, oh, my God, it's so well hidden. It's like the one time I had to look at a guide for the game. Anyway, let's go to the camp. Um, and it will teach us about skill points. So we can spend skill points in the skills menu to upgrade abilities. Brilliant. And the UI tends to bug out as well. It's a bit of a weird UI, but hey. Uh, so, okay, so there are actually three different trees that you can put skill points into. There's a survivor tree, which we're currently on. There's a hunter tree, which is this one. And later on, we'll unlock another tree, which is the brawler tree. I'm going to go for survivor tree first, because if we progress all the way through these skills, at the very end here, you'll see this says, all tomb entrances and map locations will be revealed on your map. Now, that doesn't sound as OP as, as it actually is, but this will help us incredibly with getting a lot of our pickups. So I want to get this early, like I did on my original run, and then what that will help us do is go through and get our 100% without much of a headache. So... That's what we're going to do. That will basically help us find everything in the game except the challenges. So look at these videos as half an LP, half a walkthrough for the challenges as much as anything else. So uh, we get to choose from the first five that are here. We can go with uh, Animal Instinct, which gives us... Um, uh, allows us to spot hard to find animal and food sources hard to find animals sorry and food sources uh, we can earn extra rewards when looting which we're going to actually get and various other things I'll talk about that later there's no point rambling about it now so anyway we get extra uh, loot for looting things now which is great uh, and we can cancel out this is Conrad Roth captain of the endurance we are shipwrecked on an island inside the dragon's triangle Roth Lara. you're alive 
Easy, easy. Are you okay? What happened? I remember the beach, and then it went black, and I woke up in a cave. There was this crazy man, Roth, and a dead body. Oh, God. Where are you now, Lara? Are you safe? It was so horrible. It's all my fault. This is all my fault. Lara, listen to me. I sent an SOS from the Endurance before I abandoned her. Hopefully someone caught it. I've spoken to the others. We're regrouping at my location. <sighs> Please come and get me. I have to stay here. You can do this, Lara. Remember when we climbed Snowden? You said the key was knowing that all you've got to do is just keep, keep moving. moving. Remember everything I've taught you, Lara. You're ready for this. And keep your radio on. Okay. All right, just keep moving. That's a bit of a theme of this. All right, sweet. So she seems to have a little bit of history with this Roth guy. Uh, time has passed. This, ge this game doesn't really have a day-night cycle or anything, but they do seem to have created morning and afternoon and, and nighttime versions of pretty much every map, which is really cool. So if we listen carefully as well, if I shut up, listen. Listen to how ominous this is. It's like a weird music. In fact, you might not be able to hear it too loudly, but... The door is now open, so it's been a few hours. The, the freaking door Hello? opened, guys. Hello? Is someone there? Uh, do we want to go in? Hmm. Well, actually, we don't, because first of all, I do know that I've missed a relic somewhere around here. I want to at least show you what relics are like, so give me one second. This might be the first cut of the LP. Uh, but I know that there is one around here. I remember picking it up on my first run. There's some weird rope tied to a, a tree there as well. That will become like a part of the gameplay later. Actually, I think there's a relic here. Maybe there's not. Well, this isn't a relic, but we have got... Unless there's one here too. But we have got um, a weird crate, which we don't have gear to open. So, that's at least one reason why we'll have to come back later anyway. Hmm, I can't seem to find it. So, we'll just grab it later, guys. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, there's no other direction for us to go in, in case you were wondering. There's nothing else to do but to come inside. So, let's see what we can find. By holding control, you can walk or sneak, depending on like what's going on. Way through. Damn it. I get like ridiculous lost vibes from this hatch. Uh, my first time I was I was deadly serious. I really wanted to get away, but the door blew shut, so you're kind of stuck. We can only go down. Let's go into the hatch. Kate, are you down here? And the music's getting louder. We get a weird, like, painting thing. There was something this I wanted... Yeah, I, there was something I wanted to uh, mention as well in the first episode. Do you remember we saw that woman tied up? Behind her on the wall was a painting of, like, a weird woman. Uh, and that's kind of significant too. We'll see a lot of those painted, so don't worry. But that was something I wanted to mention. Kicked myself for not having done so. What am I doing I don't know what are these weird markings. I get like this. Is, this game is such a blend of so many like favorite things. Might like it remind the weird markings on the walls remind me of Dear Esther so much, like the chalk things. And, oh, it's ridiculous. Oh God, this is insane. It looks like some kind of a tower with a blinking light amongst mountains on that bit. And what is that sound? Is that music in the game or is that actually in game? Hmm. Uh, let's grab this. This traditional no mask represents a hateful woman in the guise of a demon. Oh no, I don't think we missed a relic because I think this is the first one. So something really cool about this as well, if you look at like Uncharted, there were pickups and stuff like this. And you could always like rotate them in your inventory and be like, oh, this is cool. But no one ever would after a while because there was no point to. But actually in this game, if you do that, you can usually find extra information somehow. So let's have a look around. Maybe on the inside of the mask. There are traces of white paint on the inside. Whoever used this mask was of noble birth. Oh, and there you go. So Lara can learn extra things. That sometimes has more significance than other times. Um, but it's, it's cool the way they do it. And if I were to be playing this on, say, the Xbox, the controller would actually vibrate to tell you if you're getting closer to the, whatever you're looking for. On PC, you've just got to, I guess, wing it. 
and be happy that you've got a mouse that allows you to manipulate them quicker, perhaps. Anyway, here we go. So we found a no mask to give you a little bit of perspective of the amount of different things we can find. There are Campo Herbs, no masks, Edo Period Fan, Semper Fi, Sentia Elite Amulet Coins, Bronze Coins, a fan, just so much stuff. Look at all these different pickups, which uh, it maybe looks like more than it is, to be honest, but hey. So back into the creepy room. We got a door here, which we can try and pry. Need something to pry this open. But we need some gear. We can open that though, which gives us something. I guess a little bit of experience, perhaps. Anyway, we do have a torch, so we can burn through here. Uh, they're just the, the underground areas here just look so messed up. So somebody's been storing meat here. Look at that deer. Look at it. Look at it. We didn't do that, at least. Oh, brutal. Yeah, I can only imagine the smell. Apparently the actress is in Grey's Anatomy as well that's doing Lara, which is uh, pretty cool. So here, look. This music wasn't just... I thought it was in-game music, but actually it's coming from this. So somebody's around. Somebody's put this on. It doesn't make you feel too safe, does it? Now that we've got this item, though, we can actually start prying stuff open. You remember that wooden crate I showed you? If we were, if, when we eventually can go back there, we can now open that up. So there's some backtracking, you know... Again, takes away from the linearity. And now we can come through here too. Literally just hammering the button. It's never as simple as just interact with something on this game. You're always forcing your way through. Okay. So I guess we, uh, we're pretty safe. We can get through. There's a weird, like, Japanese poster thing on the wall there with a wolf. No idea what it says, or even what, like, Japanese script it's written in, but hey. Wait, do they have multiple scripts or just multiple languages? I, I can't remember. No, they have different written languages, don't they? Yeah, and a lot of them. Okay, so we can... Sam? This is an important scene that we're coming up to, okay? So, do pay attention. We have a fire. Look for the smoke. We're on our way. Laura, you made it. Sam, um, thank goodness. Surprise. It's okay, he's one of us. Sorry if I startled you. This place would make anyone a little jumpy. We just spoke to your crew. They're on their way. Look, he bandaged my foot. <laughs> oh, it was the least I could do. My manners. I'm sorry, I'm Matthias. A teacher by trade. Not really cut out for island life, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sweetie, you look exhausted. Sit down. Yeah. Sam here was just telling me about the sun queen. Right, Himiko. Can you tell me more? I'm intrigued. Well, believe it or not, a couple thousand years ago, Queen Himiko pretty much ran things in Japan. <sighs> she loves telling this story. Himiko was beautiful, enigmatic, but also ruthless and powerful. Legend says she had shamanistic powers. And this is where she loses me. Well, there's always some truth to miss. She commanded an army of samurai warriors, her magnificent storm guard. They rode the very winds into battle, laying waste to all who opposed them. They say the sun rose at Himiko's command, and she ruled everything its rays touched, from the mountains to the sea to beyond. <sighs> but what happened to you? Spaghetti-o! Shit! No! Sam! Sam! 
Oh, shit. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna be a dick, guys. Um, I'll see you next time.